Good day guys! Today, we shall continue the series of lecture videos for criminal law. Ang mga lecture videos na ito shall only be short, yet compact, and direct to the point. We shall only cover the salient topics and provisions of the Revised Penal Code, various jurisprudence, doctrines, principles, and selected special penal laws. This lecture series can actually be used by criminology, political science, and legal management students. However, all students who are taking up criminal law and all those who want to learn about the criminal laws are very welcome here in our lecture series. For this lecture video, we shall discuss the second characteristic of criminal law, and that is territoriality. So, let us now start our discussion. The principle of territoriality provides that penal laws shall be enforceable within the Philippine territory. It is actually derived from Article 2 of the Revised Penal Code. Guys, you have to remember that the territory of the Philippines is defined under Article 1 of the 1987 Constitution. And I will write the provision of the national territory in the description box below for your perusal. Now, let me share to you kung ano nga ba ang pagkakaiba ng generality principle sa territoriality principle. Always remember this, ang generality principle ay nakatutok sa offenders whether Filipinos or foreigners who performed acts which are punishable by our criminal laws. On the other hand, ang territoriality principle naman ay nakafocus sa lugar or the place of the commission or the performance of a felonious act. In short, generality answers the question who committed a felony, while territoriality answers the question where was a felony committed. It is to note guys na yung mga nabanggit ko sa last lecture video na specific persons who are immune from criminal prosecution, ang immunity applies to them even though they have performed criminal acts within the Philippine territory. Now, for purposes of venue under the rules on criminal procedure and territoriality principle, the place of the commission of the act and the place where the effects of such acts occurred shall be considered. In other words, ang venue ng criminal action ay nakadepende sa lugar kung saan nagawang isang krimen o kung saan ang effect ng isang crime ay nagtake place. We will go deeper into this as we move on sa ating lecture series. Now, we have to take note that in studying the territoriality principle, we also have to study the extraterritoriality principle. Ito yung nag-lay down ng exceptions sa territorial application ng ating criminal laws. Under the extraterritoriality principle, the revised Penal code shall be enforceable outside the Philippine territory as provided by Article 2, paragraphs 1 to 5 of the Revised Penal Code. Now, we study these exceptions one by one para mas maiintindihan natin. First, under paragraph, uh, paragraph 1, when a crime is committed in a Philippine ship or airship, kahit pa ito ay wala sa Philippine territory, our penal laws still shall apply. This is what we call the flag state rule. For example, na-hijack ang Philippine airline sa Amerika. Dahil ang PAL ay nakaregister sa Philippines, our court has jurisdiction over the crime of hijacking kahit sa ibang bansa pa ito na commit. We shall actually have another lecture video for flag state rule. Kaya mas maiintindahan nyo pa siya sa mga susunod na discussions. Second, under the protective principle which can be found under paragraphs 2 and 3, our criminal law shall operate to persons who shall forge or counterfeit any coin or currency note of the Philippine Islands or obligations and securities issued by the government of the Philippine Islands, or those who introduce or import the forged currency note or securities and obligations. Kaya kahit nasa ibang bansa pa ang gumawa ng forgery or counterfeiting ng any coin or currency note, for uh, say for example, sa Russia or sa China or sa Amerika. 
sila ay subject to prosecution under our penal laws. Third exception is found in paragraph 4 and it talks about the functions related crimes. Take note of this. This provision applies only to public officers or employees. These are committed by public officers and employees who are stationed in a foreign country and performing foreign services. Hence, when a consul, for example, commits falsification of public document in relation to his function or when he performed acts in violation of the Anti-Graft and Corrupt, and Corrupt Practices Act, then he shall be subject to our penal laws kahit nasa ibang bansa pa siya. Fourth exception is found in paragraph 5 and it talks about crimes against national security and the laws of nations. Specifically, ang mga crimes na ito are found in Title 1, Book 2 of the Revised Penal Code. Hence, those who shall commit the said acts are subject to our penal laws. Halimbawa, ay treason, or espionage. Now, to sum it up, we should always remember that our penal laws are enforceable within the Philippine territory as invoked under the territoriality principle. However, there are exceptions because clearly, under the extraterritoriality principle found in Article 2, paragraphs 1 to 5 of the Revised Penal Code, Offenders who commit specific crimes are subject to prosecution even though they perform the crimes outside the Philippine territory. So, this ends our discussion for the, for the territoriality principle of the criminal law. I am Ian Gonzalez telling you, alamin natin ang batas upang hindi tayo mamuhay ng marahas. See you again next time. Thank you and God bless.